please welcome Leland Hago Harrington to the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. Accepting on behalf of the Harrington family, please welcome the former executive director of the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame Museum and current member of the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame Selection Committee, Mr. Roger Godin. Well, it's a distinct honor uh, on uh, my behalf to represent the Harrington family and uh, to congratulate the other enshrinees, Red Berenson, Natalie Darwitz, David Poyle, Paul Stewart, and the family of uh, Jim Johansson, uh, and recognizing uh, Jim's uh, uh, contributions that were uh, outlined uh, earlier in the program for the Lester Patrick Award. Uh, now, there's not, not much doubt that uh, uh, early American hockey has not been researched in sufficient depth. When I say that, I'm referring to the accomplishments of our players, and uh, certainly Harrington is an example of that. I was uh, the recorder for the first meeting of the uh, selection Committee of the United States Hockey Hall of Fame. It was held in Boston in the fall of 1972. And I can assure you that uh, Hago Harrington's name uh, never arose. And we had the best people available then, historically, the late Don Clark and Walter Bush, but, but Harrington wasn't a player at all. So we're, we're catching up. And so we've caught up to the point where we've uh, found this magnificent player coming out of Melrose, Massachusetts High School, and going on to play at the highest level of hockey in the United States at that time, the United States Amateur Hockey Association. It really was a major league operation, despite the name, divided into three uh, uh, divisions and subsequently morphed into two. But uh, it's important to emphasize the fact that Harrington did essentially what Phil Housley, Tom Barrasso, and Bobby Carpenter did later on. He went from high school to the highest level. Now, who did he do that with? He did it with uh, the BAA. It was all the BAA, the Boston Athletic Association. And many of you will say, well, yeah, they're the people that run the, uh, the, the great race every April. Very true. But there was a time when they were active in hockey, the 20s and 30s, producing some outstanding teams. Uh, the 23-24 team was... Uh, uh, runners-up for the national title, something called the Fellows Cup, which uh, the U.S. AHA, uh, basically that was their uh, playoff uh, uh, cup. Uh, and then uh, the 1924 U.S. Olympic team, which wins the silver medal in France, um, squads in, the, in those days were nine or ten players. Well, two-thirds of that team came off the BAA. So it shows you what a, what a factor they were and what an achievement it was for Harrington to go from high school to uh, that level. Now, the video recounts uh, what Hago did in the NHL, uh, the three-goal game, and his subsequent career principally with Providence of the Canadian American Hockey League. So I won't belabor that, but I do want you to keep in mind that the, the league that he was playing in Canadian Americans subsequently morphed into what we now know as the American Hockey League, uh, the highest minor league that we have in this country. So he was uh, putting up great numbers, uh, and uh, that's recounted. But I want to I want to leave you with with this. Um, Hago had a daughter by the name of Sally, Sally Harrington. And she herself had a significant career, going on to be a prima ballerina with the New York City Ballet, one of the outstanding ballet companies nationally, uh, founded by the late George Balanchine. So she, in effect, was playing at the highest level, as was her father. So what did she dance under? Was it Sally Harrington? No, it wasn't. She danced under Sarah Leland. That's right. She used her father's last name, 
and what greater tribute can there be than that? So I leave you with that. Thank you.